Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we're going to be kicking things off with one of my favorite stories I've ever covered here on the channel, and that's that N.K. Jimson has officially been made a MacArthur Fellow. Awesome! This sci-fi fantasy icon has made waves in the genre, and it only makes sense for her to be stowed with the MacArthur. Oh, that's still there. With the MacArthur Fellowship. I also thought I went a little crazy because I thought I covered this exact story already, but I guess I'm just a little insane and make up fake memories. <laughs> Congratulations to Jimson and good choice. And next we have a little bit of a quickie news as Orbit has dropped an excerpt and preview of an upcoming book called Son of the Storms, with a, a little bit of a synopsis being, In the thriving city of Bonza, Donzo is a clever but disillusioned scholar who longs for a life beyond the rigid family and political obligations expected of the city's elite. A way out presents itself when Lilum, a skin-changing warrior, shows up wounded in his barn. She comes from the nameless islands, which, according to Basa lore, don't exist, and neither should the mythical magic of the Ebor she wields. Ooh, tantalized, consider me that. But in a tremendous piece of news coming out about adaptations, note, I do not cover almost any of the adaptations announced anymore unless they're huge ones because there is just so many. But this one I want to take special note of because Christopher Paolini's To Sleep in a Sea of Stars will be made into a feature film with the studio behind it made up stories. It is also worth note this will be adapted to a script by Paolini with his sister. So this isn't going off to some third party person. No, the original author is adapting it to a script. Now, I haven't seen actually anything this studio has put out, but here's a list right there. And a few of their projects, from what I understand, have been very well received, so that's exciting. And honestly, my biggest takeaway is that Christopher Paolini deserves a good adaptation of one of his works, so I'm excited that this might be his shot. But for those of you who picked up To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, because it was certainly an adventurous ride I went on earlier this year. That was weird phrasing. Now, in an update to a story that I'm sure is going to turn the comment section into a bunch of... Ah. For those of you unaware, J.K. Rowling has made quite the kerfuffle within the writing community recently, as she has come out with what many consider to be anti-trans rhetoric. This includes accidentally reposting an anti-trans snippet from a blog into a fan art complimentary post. No, really, that happened. It's very awkward and probably one of the biggest gaffes that's ever happened to a celebrity on Twitter. As well as retweeting and liking many fringe people from like Medium who are writing anti-trans stuff and doing a very common anti-trans thing, which is trying to insinuate that trans people are making an argument they are not in the first place. This kind of gaslighting is actually really common in these sort of discriminatory stances because they don't want to come out and just say like, hey, I'm I'm anti these people. In response to this, over a thousand literary figures have come together and signed an open letter essentially condemning what J.K. Rowling is normalizing. This includes the like of Stephen King, Margaret Atwood, and Neil Gaiman. Heavy, big hitters. And of course, I'm hoping having people who come out so strong, swinging, so big in a way that could actually be heard making statements like this. As members of the writing and publishing community of the United States and Canada, we stand firmly in support of trans and non-binary people and their rights. We are writers, editors, journalists, agents, and professionals in multiple forms of publishing. We believe in the power of words. We want to do our part to help shape the curve of history toward justice and fairness. And for those of you unaware, Stephen King and J.K. Rowling already had a bit of an incident on Twitter where Stephen King kind of praised J.K. Rowling inadvertently in a way, and then J.K. Rowling put up a massive post kind of praising Stephen King as a great person, and then Stephen King said like trans people are real people, and then J.K. Rowling deleted all of her praise of Stephen King, which apparently didn't really bother Stephen King because he still put up a review of her new book like, eh, 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 it's fine. Also, I didn't even see this in my first time through the articles, but this was also signed by the likes of N.K. Jimson, John Green, Roxanne Gay. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of people getting involved with just saying like, hey, no, you're wrong. And I really appreciate that. And on top of all this, We've also uh, just seen Stephen King continue to like retweet J.K. Rowling about her upcoming children's book and all this stuff. So he seems to like not even register or want to acknowledge the fact that she deleted all of her praise of him. To me, it just looks more and more like an adult versus a petulant child, but that's just my interpretation. I guess he's definitely taking the standpoint of like separate the artist from their work, which is something that many of the actors involved with the Harry Potter franchise have already done, encouraging fans to still be a part of the community, love one another, all this stuff. It's really, truly incredible seeing JK Rowling just bury herself so deeply 
that the actors involved in her franchises have come out against her. <laughs> Many of her literary heroes are coming out and saying you're wrong and horrible. Fans are getting tattoos removed. It's just... I've never seen anything on this scale before. But this is going to probably be the most controversial story we cover here today, so if you're going to discuss it in the comments down below, please be respectful and just try and keep a civil tone. This is something a lot of people are going to be sensitive about and try and be understanding where people are coming from. That's all I can say. But we can move on from that dumpster fire and talk about the fact that Leigh Bardugo has released an excerpt for her upcoming short story collection titled The Lives of Saints. So if you want to see this excerpt, of course, link right down there in the description. And I have everything timestamped now. I do that for every fantasy news. If you want to skip anything, you can. I probably should have said that for the really controversial one. Too late. Not changing it. You had to sit through it. Haha. -ha. Well, unless you are knew about the timestamps. In case you missed it though, we did do a fantasy news quickie over the weekend where I covered the fact that the Lord of the Rings show is rumored to have some nudity within it, and we are definitely for sure getting a Lord of the Rings 4K release coming this December. Very excited for that. Now I want to do an update for that first story though. Apparently some people have commented on that video and actually come out and released pieces since that news has come forth and said just because they've hired an intimacy director does not necessarily mean the nudity within the show will be directly sex scene related. It's very very common for intimacy directors to be hired on for just having people naked on set, making sure everything's okay and consensual, even something as small as a kissing scene. So that's all right. There will still probably be nudity definitely within the show, but as I said, and I made clear in that video, it could only be background, fey, creature related, or what have you. But not necessarily. There could be an intimacy director for I guess scenes that don't go as far as like schling schlong and fling flong. I hate that I have to use these words because otherwise YouTube will smack me. For all we know, it could be orc schlong. I'm okay with seeing some orc schlong. I'm kind of weirdly curious about it. We also had a sit down with Jim Butcher and James Marsden for New York Comic Con, which was a really fun panel. And yeah, both of them were as funny, as charismatic as you expect them to be. And finally, we have gotten a release date, schedule, and trailer for season five of The Expanse. Now the first three episodes will drop December 16th and they're going to follow through with that boys release schedule. And I think that's the right move. I know some people are still gonna be upset about this because they want it to drop all at once. I'm in the other camp where I like to discuss a weekly episode with my friends, speculate, have fun, all that. But hey, if you're a binger, I get it. But sorry, it seems like Amazon is not going the Netflix way. And instead they're going to be doing this three at once and then weekly release, which I'm a huge fan of because it gives you that kind of initial momentum. And then you can talk from there. I really like this release schedule. That's just my opinion on the matter. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Though I think Netflix now is showing more signs of going towards a weekly release as we've seen from them because it's just the more viable way to go. It keeps your show in the conversation longer. It's not just a binge and done and has a greater chance to build an audience while the season is active, which is when your show is the most being talked about and promoted. So that's probably the future of streaming. I know it sounds counterintuitive with the way streaming encourages binging for a release, for a show's success. If you want the show you like to continue on and find an audience so it can go many seasons deep, this is probably the best choice. But Netflix has even said they don't really want to keep shows going beyond just a couple seasons because it's not commercially viable for them except for their mega hits like Stranger Things. So who am I to say? I got no idea. We've also had the trailer drop for Resident Alien, which is an adaptation of a comic book series, as I understand, and looks pretty interesting. But the main reason I'm covering it, if I'm gonna be honest, is it has Alan freaking Tudyk, and I love that man. And I'm very excited to see him be taking on the, it looks like central role from the trailer as someone who's not ever read the original source material, but looks cool. It's on sci-fi, so I'll catch it on whichever streaming service it inevitably ends up on. Does sci-fi have their own now? Probably, they all do. And I'm sorry, they didn't even title this a trailer. They said it's the first seven minutes. Why is it that we get teases for trailers, trailers, first seven minute clips that are really trailers? I've generally seen a tease, then a trailer for the trailer, a trailer, and then what they call the full length trailer for one thing before. What's happening to the world I live in today? Are we gonna start seeing TikTok? We're gonna start seeing TikTok trailers. And in news, I'm going to try and stay as positive as I can for Captain Janeway's returning with the original actress, Kate Milgrew, back for the role. whoop de doo I would like to get an artist. I'll give a false I can't. I can't take it anymore. So when I hear they're dragging another retired captain out to bring back another show, I have nothing but numbness now. We also had the full length trailer drop. So many trailers, so much, this is the whole world, it's trailers. We also had a trailer drop for CBS All Accesses. 
the stand. And I, you know what? The biggest thing I want to talk about here is the fact that they're going through with releasing the stand adaptation during a global pandemic. It's not going to offend anybody. It's not like it's made to be COVID. It's not it's a story that existed originally, but it's also going to be something a lot of people, because of the way the human mind works, are going to be enticed by because we're living through a lesser version of it. It's also one of the best American horror stories ever told, so I'm ready for this one. I'm excited for it. I hope it's good. And check out the trailer if you'd like to in the comments down below. And I'm just getting these two last trailers out of the way. We had another trailer for American God Season 3, and we also had a trailer for Animaniacs where they did like a Jurassic Park thing, and it was cute. I'm done with trailers. I'm moving on. No more trailers. God. And by the way, that was not even like half the trailers posted. I'm not covering all the trailers that are posted anymore. There is so, like we went from the announcement title wave to the trailer title wave, and I just don't care. If something looks really enticing or good, I'll bring it in, but that's all. I'm sorry I seem so aggressive today. I'm. It's been a morning. It's been a morning. Could I just say that? It's It's been a day. We also had Brandon Sanderson releasing his top 10 video games of all time, which if you want to check that out, it's kind of interesting to compare your own top 10 versus the Sando Mando Lando Phantom Man himself's top 10. But in the final piece of fantasy news we're going to cover here today, something I am curious to see how it will develop and what the fan response will be and the implications for HBO as a whole, it's officially been confirmed and ordered for the Green Lantern TV show to come to HBO Max. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, this is announced a long time ago. It was actually almost a year exactly first brought to our attention that they were in the works for a Green Lantern show. Basically, if the show's not ordered yet, but they're working on it, they're essentially putting it together to the point to see if the studio wants to commit, and an order means they've committed in a greater way. But order does not mean the same thing to every single studio, so it's hard to put like an exact label what order means, but generally means the next stage of the process is being worked on by the people involved with creating it and they might be getting a budget and all their money. I actually reached out to a friend of mine in Hollywood to ask him what exactly does ordered mean and he's like depends on the studio because they all have different things that kind of go along with it so I don't know either. But from what the article says this hasn't been written yet so they're literally just ordering the people behind it to go ahead and write the scripts. This does not mean it's officially greenlit. Greenlit means they've seen the product and they know yes it's going to be made but as of right now they're just ordering it to be created to the point where they'll go, okay, yes, we're interested in this, or no, they can still can it. But to fully confirm what we do know for sure, this is planned to be a greater large scope Green Lantern live action show that will involve the entire Green Lantern Corp and what they do in the comics on that larger scope and not seeming to be aiming at the similar vibe we got from the Green Lantern movie where it was just like this thing on Earth. From what they're saying, this looks like a more broad picture approach to the Lantern Corps but we do have someone involved, the original writer from the original Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds still involved in this project. I'm also curious because it seems like HBO is going to somehow soon be the home of like the DCEU with everything that's going in that direction. I'd be really curious to see like if we see a, like how Marvel now rests at Disney Plus, if we're gonna see a flip of that in a long-term commitment to having the DC universe, whether it reboots itself or continues in the direction it's going into living on HBO. That's a really interesting story. That's a really interesting angle that I'm going to be looking at because I'm not a very big DC fan, but I care about streaming services weirdly. But anyway, that is the final piece of fantasy news we're covering here today. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here. Hit the Discord server if you'd like to join the fantasy news discussion or post stories of your own for potentially me covering them here. Have a good one, y'all. I'm going to I'm going to dab out. Hua! At felt weird. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, Bree Beaven and Kelvin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful start to your week. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.